almost 90% of you watching aren't subscribed. So smash that button and it'll make me a happy boy. Please, it helps a ton. And if you do, I'll give you a free kiss available in my Discord. Guilty Gear Strive is the latest installment in the Guilty Gear series. Releasing in 2021, it has bolstered over 3 million sales as of recent. But you may be on the fence about it. You might have seen, I don't know, a review from Guilty Gear Gary, telling you the game is horrible and don't play it and instead go play X fighting game, but he has 3,000 hours in Strive for some reason. You might even be new to fighting games or a veteran looking for something new to try. Or maybe you've never heard of the game at all. So we're going to go over what this game has to offer for players, ranging from all levels, and see if Guilty Gear is worth the money for you. Now, the Guilty Gear story is very, uh, unique. With a lot of random and wacky things happening throughout, but luckily to help catch you up on the lore, there's a nice little simple graph explaining, you know, the characters and who they are, their motives, relationships, etc. throughout the games. Starting off pretty simple and then, uh, it gets a little more complex. Like, <laughs> what is this? I don't, I don't know what this is. Now, the story mode for Guilty Gear Strive is a departure from most other story modes found in other fighting games. This thing is basically just a five hour cinematic, coming across more as an anime than a story mode. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it anime fighter. <laughs> no, but seriously, there is actually no gameplay within the story. It's quite literally a whole ass movie, which has the perks of it being able to tell a cohesive narrative throughout the story, but obviously there's no gameplay elements tied within. The story itself is pretty good, not to say it's a creative masterpiece, but it's definitely entertaining. For my take of the Guilty Gear story, it's basically as if, I don't know, a five-year-old explained headcanon to you. So then a, a blue man gets pulled out of a girl's boobies, and then he's slammed into a wall, and then he can magically summon a super cool red car, and he goes to this big building, right, and he just blows it up, and under the building there's actually a statue, but the statue came to life, and it's actually a 10,000-year-old vampire man who's a samurai, but then they, they, they fight, and, but then they become friends, and in Soul Bad, Got. A lot of the story is just a lot of butt ends. But I don't want to discredit it. I personally enjoyed the story and there's a lot of attention to detail towards the characters and their motives and their identity as a whole and how that plays into the story. But personally, I feel like unless you want the full viewing experience, I feel like a lot of people will gloss over this feature or find a video online giving the TLDR and there are quite a few videos that explain the entire story pretty well and they're very funny. But due to there being no gameplay and just a raw five hour narrative, you definitely need to be looking for that kind of entertainment as you aren't going to get that fighting game story stereotype. So I'd say it's neither a pro nor a con, it's more down to preference, but the more traditional story mode is sort of found in the arcade. Wow, good segue. Yeah, th thanks, Rain. Yeah, that's a good job. The arcade mode for Guilty Gear Strive is actually quite good and it has a little bit of everything. It has challenge, story and bosses. After selecting a character, you're given an opponent. These opponents generally tie into the story of the character, and after defeating certain characters, they have interactions between them, either relating back to the overarching narrative, or just cute little interactions between the characters and back and forth. It's, it's a nice touch. After going through multiple stages, you'll end up at the last boss, which usually for most characters is a buff Nagoriyuki. And don't get me wrong, this is difficult. Even experienced fighting game players will have to have a few shots at it. And don't worry if you're newer, the game has difficulty scaling to how well you're doing. If you lose at any point, the difficulty will drop down, but the AI is still challenging, but not enough to overpower you. Arcade mode does a great job of the short and sweet sort of gameplay loop fighting games typically have, with some lore spliced in, and it's very fun for casuals, people looking for achievements from the bosses. Alongside this mode, there's also survival, which is pretty simple. You pick a character and fight an AI, then go to the next one if you win. And your health carries over, so it's how long you can survive, hence the title. Okay, that wasn't even a joke there. I don't know, who keeps putting these here? Now, training modes and tutorials are very important for any game, as it gives a way for players to understand the rules and objectives of the game. Now, fighting games premise is usually pretty simple. Beat the other guy up until you win. But when you actually look under the hood, a lot of the mechanics, special moves, combos, and meters, it, it definitely can get complex. So first, we're gonna look at the training mode. The training mode's pretty good. It's pretty stock standard. It's simple to use and allows you to test loads of things. It has the usual toggles for counter hits, do X after Y, setups, and also has a recording feature, allowing you to fully play out scenarios and practice moves more in depth. The training mode, however, is missing a very key element, which is a frame data bar, allowing you to see the specifics if you're into that thing. However, it can be modded on PC. If you're on console, unfortunately, you won't have access to it, but yeah, that is a bit of a downside. But outside of those utilities, it's basically a stock standard training mode, allowing you to reset and replay situations and practice general combos and see what does and doesn't work. Now, this brings us on to the beginner modes, onboardings, tutorial, whatever you want to call it, okay? This is what teaches the new players the fundamental mechanics of the game and show them how to actually play. 
And fighting games are a hard thing to pick up, especially for new players, and I think Guilty Gear Strive does a pretty good job from their tutorial, mission modes, and combo create tool. Tutorial being a basic move forward, left, right, and do some attacks, then block, like the general fighting game gist. And the mission mode really ramping it up and teaching you some of the more advanced tech in the game, which can be really helpful to show what it is, how it works, and why you would do it without necessarily expecting you to implement it immediately. And due to the single player challenge of it, it allows you to take your time and really understand and grasp how it works. And Combo Creator being a tool for other players to make combos that you can try, some being very good optimal combos and bread and butters, and some just being flashy for the sake of showing they exist, I don't know. I believe onboarding for Guilty Gear Strive is very good for teaching new players how to play, and the game does a great job at not leaving people at the tutorial. A lot of fighting games kind of teach you the basics and they say good luck, figure it out, but Guilty Gear Strive does a good job of helping you through the process and learning the more advanced mechanics in the game. Guilty Gear Strive also comes equipped with some collectible features alongside a figure mode. These assets can be collected through fishing using world dollars. After winning games and leveling up characters, you receive in-game currency which can be used to gamble on a fish, Unfortunately, fishing is not a mini game, it's just a slot machine of fish. This will select random cosmetics of your choosing, being concept artworks found in the gallery, music and songs from previous Guilty Gear games, cosmetics for your room, allowing you to change the look of your house when creating a player match, cosmetics for your character, allowing you to have some sick drip, and additional stuff to figure mode, which you can use to create cool scenes or visuals. Figure mode is so sort of being a soft SFM, allowing you to adjust poses and set up a scene to get some cool screenshots. So I'm just gonna say it straight up. Guilty Gear has some of the most interesting characters in any fighting game. This is a power lineup. For what they don't have in numbers, they make up with polish. Every character's visual fidelity is phenomenal. With all their frames and animations being so smooth and well done, each character individually with their own theme, and don't get me wrong, these themes slap. The soundtrack for Strive is amazing. Each character generally has some form of gimmick or mechanic they play around, leading to them feeling very unique from each other and none of them are really playing alike. However, as much as I think the characters are great, if you only purchase the base game, it will only allow you to play the base 15 characters and completely excludes any DLC characters, which you need to purchase separately. These DLC can be purchased individually for like $6 US, or you can purchase the season pass, which will unlock the corresponding characters giving you additional DLC stages and color variations for the characters that are within that season. But due to the game being three years old now and moving into season four, for someone buying the base game now, half the roster is locked and needs to be purchased. And the issue is, is you can't demo the characters to see if you like them or practice against them in training mode, unless you own them, which leads to players to have a slight disadvantage if they want to practice a certain matchup or interaction, but don't own the character. This means if you want to have all characters unlock baseline, you need to purchase the Daredevil Edition, which can be pretty expensive, so keep this in mind if you're looking at a specific character who came later in the game's life cycle. And while I think the DLC is at a good price point and definitely reasonable considering the love and talent that goes into making it, I think due to the game being older now leads newer players to cop a lot of upfront fees if they want to get all the characters. Now moving on to online play. This is going to be where you spend 99% of the game assuming you purchase for the PvP elements of the game. Our adventure starts off with a small network tutorial explaining how the lobby system works and how to match with opponents. Guilty Gear prioritizes a cab based system, meaning both you and another player hop onto a cab and verse each other. After explaining this sort of feature, the game matches you against an AI soul bad guy to determine where your rank is. Depending on outcome, you'll be placed in a floor from 1 to 10. This is called the tower system and it is unique to Guilty Gear Strive as the only ranked system available officially. The concept is simple. You win, you go up a floor. You lose, you go down a floor. You cannot go on the levels lower than your assigned floor, but you can ascend higher, meaning it creates a protection bubble for new players and veterans can't go down and destroy new players. However, with the way match awaking works and being able to verse the same opponent multiple times, and being able to choose your opponents lead it to being a really casual take of a rank system. And the pinnacle rank being Celestial means you can find anyone from Leffen to Big Muck Joe who plays Pot and just spams Megafist, which can lead to a massive skill variation and less quality matches. But this isn't really a problem in floor nine and below as new players climb up slowly and at their own pace. But yeah, definitely once you reach that like intermediate sort of level, the, the, you, you're open to everything. So if you're looking for an official MMR system or a rank akin to Street Fighter, Tekken, or you know, other similar MMR systems like in League of Legends or Dota, you just won't find that here. There is an unofficial fan-made MMR system website called Rating Update, but it has its own flaws due to the nature of no official support. However, if rank modes don't bother you, the sacrifice of them is well worth and greatly increases your quality of matches and gives you something to work towards and develop your skills as a player. For online, the servers can also be shaky at times, 
while peer-to-peer -peer and connecting to other players, sometimes the game can just give way and kick you out. Like straight up mid-match, just kick you out. And cabs can become glitched and get you stuck on initializing match or match failed for extended periods of time, usually a minute or so which can be really frustrating after a while. Outside of the tower, there is an open park, which allows anyone to join regardless of rank. And it's seen like the casual of casual modes, where there's no penalty for loss and people of all skills can just play and have fun. Depending on your region, this may be the only place to find games. As in Australia, we play on OCE servers and the overall player base is too small to split up 11 times across all the different floors. Uh, but there's definitely an active and positive community found within these parks, so just check with your region. Usually a lot of regions would have a Discord as well, so it's good to check in there. Moving into player matches. Player matches allow you to create your own room and play with friends and get you all in your own little hub. You can customize these rooms with various cosmetics, but it's only limited to nine players. Another really cool feature with the player match is you can set the room type to training mode allowing you and a friend to go into training mode together, losing out on some of the features like recordings, but allowing you to practice alongside your friend and even potentially teach your friend how to play a set that are like hands-on. Now for the actual online gameplay, what it is to play Guilty Gear Online. This is a death pit, a true hell on earth experience that you will come to despise with all your being. <laughs> oh, hey, actually got the joke on that one, nice. Now, if you're new to fighting games, the best way that I can explain fighting games is basically it's Dark Souls. However, instead of having Melenia as the boss who's going to keep pounding on you, the real boss is yourself. The game is punishing and unforgiving when you fight someone who is better than you. And with no exterior factors to blame but yourself, it can definitely take a toll on those who are weak of heart. However, the gameplay loop here is really something else when you get into it. The smooth gameplay and seemingly limitless combos really allows you to do something special and create your own unique playstyle, which really defines you as a player. And with the system mechanics like Wild Assault and Roman Cancels, these allow you to expand the potential of these characters and allow you to really freestyle your approach. And with gameplay being so fast and blitzy, it really leads to explosive moments where you finally get that counter hit and do some big damage. And again, with the characters being so unique from one another and having toolkits that allow player expression, you really create a player identity for yourself, and that's probably one of the most important things a good fighting game can do, and Strive definitely has that. Guilty Gear Strive also has an active competitive scene, being the third most highest sign-up event for EVO this year, EVO being the biggest fighting game tournament of the year, which is massive considering Street Fighter, Tekken, and Mortal Kombat are considered the big three. Strive's really deciding to push themselves up as a real contender for the spot. Now, looking at the future of Strive, it's no secret that fighting games aren't at the top spot forever, hence why, you know, we have a Tekken 8, or a Street Fighter 6, or a Mortal Kombat, whatever number they're on. They're like iPhones, they just make it up as they go. But Strive has confirmed a season four, a new 3v3 game mode being a tag-based co-op mode similar to the upcoming game 2XKO, and increased support from the devs. The game's shaping up to be around for quite a while. And the developers don't seem to be rushing to a new title just yet, which this is great and I think it's important so that way you know that your purchase has longevity and you're not buying at the end of a development life cycle. Now, is Guilty Gear worth the money? In my experience, 100%. I've gotten thousands of hours of entertainment for the price. It's, it's it's unbelievable, right? But obviously that's only me. So let's break it down to see if it would be worth for you. As a fighting game, I think it holds up incredibly well. And even though it's been out for three years, I still believe it's a beginner friendly game to new players and those who have never touched a fighting game before. And with the new upcoming 3v3 mode, the developers have said it's a way to onboard friends or new players by giving them a way to play with their friends opposed to fighting their friends, which is going to be great to see. The biggest hiccup I see that'll probably demotivate you is the DLC. And while having access to the base roster and affordable ways to acquire characters that interest you, the fact half the roster is locked may be daunting and a bit of a paywall for new players. I suggest looking at the base roster and seeing if any of the characters you like or are interested in are available. If not, you would have to purchase the characters individually if you wanted one character or buy the season pass they're assigned to. While this is limiting, I think it only matters to those who want to try new characters or need the character to practice some more of the advanced stuff in the game. So I don't think it'll hinder you too much as a new player. However, the game has great single player modes, tutorials and missions to get your skill level up and an active scene online who are very, it's a very friendly community. It's hard not to say yes to the game, but if you're looking for a narrative based game, there's nothing in the game you wouldn't be able to gather from watching it on YouTube and I would say save yourself the money. Also keep in mind due to the nature of fighting games and there not being an MMR system trying to give you a 50% win loss ratio, you might feel the burn starting off. But if you're fine with losing and looking for a game that rewards self-improvement and love a grind, definitely it's the game to give a go. The tower does do a good job of pitting you against players in a similar skill level if you are new. And if you're on the fence, I'd recommend waiting for a sale. The sales usually come with regular Steam sales like seasonal sales, winter, summer, all that sort of stuff, as well as individual 
Angel Arc system work sales, which usually happens when a new character releases. Dropping the price of the base game and all DLC season passes by 50% or more, and with Evo just around the corner and news on the season four release date, a, a sale is 100% on the way. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and allows me to keep doing this sort of thing. And if you're gonna purchase Guilty Gear, welcome aboard, have a great time, and maybe watch some of my other videos. You know, they might help you pick up a few things. Thanks for watching and have a lovely day.